Everyday carry, is this something that you should do? Yes, absolutely you should. But do you carry two pistols like this guy? If you don't, you just might after you watch this video. Stick around. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. All right, guys, so before we get into this video, really quick, don't forget to go onto the 2 Alpha Training Group website, sign up for the newsletter. We only send them out about once or twice a month, so we're not gonna spam you, but you will be up to date on the latest courses, products, apparel, special events that we'll be at, and you'll just be in the know, man. You'll be part of our community just like you are here on YouTube. All right, let's get the video going. All right, so why EDC? Why carry every day? Well, you don't leave your home without your wallets or your keys or your phone, so it only makes sense that you leave home with something that'll help you defend yourself or defend others. But before we can get into what you should carry, let's talk about what kind of lifestyle do you live? What kind of pattern of life do you have? That'll help you kind of decide on what you should carry. If you're, for example, somebody who works from home all the time and you never leave your house except to run grocery errands or pick up dry cleaning, your EDC might look very minimal. For example, just a gun with an extra magazine and that, may, that might be it. But if you're somebody that spends more time outside and away from home, especially out in public, you may want to have a little more than just a pistol and an extra magazine. You may want to have medical items, for example, a tourniquet or some kind of stop the bleed trauma pack. You may want to have stuff like that, or you may just have a bag where you can just throw a bunch of stuff in. Uh, what's in the box? Uh, take, give me the what's gun. in the fucking box? Give me the gun. So these are things to think about before we can talk about what should I carry for my EDC. A couple other things that we should talk about for EDC is just garments, right? It's easy to carry a gun, but obviously there's some printing there and we need to understand, well, what does that printing mean to the garment that I'm wearing? For example, in this t-shirt, I can print very easily. Why? Because I like fitted clothing. All right, but if I was wearing a hoodie, then the printing might kind of go away. What if I was wearing a button-up shirt, right? That doesn't print as much either. What if I was just wearing a jacket? A jacket would definitely not print, but depending on where I'm carrying, appendix or four o'clock. So it's important to understand what different garments mean to garment defeat and also how you get to the gun. But this is something that you guys should look at your wardrobe or just the everyday stuff that you wear and be like, yep, I wanna wear a t-shirt today or no, I have to wear a button up, but what does that mean to my draw? Well, this is something that you should spend maybe about five, 10 minutes at home doing before you step out of the door because the mistakes that you might make out there that might cost you your time in life, you can mitigate here at home. Just dry fire. So if I'm wearing a t-shirt, been there, done that, that's easy. What about a hoodie? Well, it's been a while. I'm in Texas, it's hot, but let me wear, let me wear a hoodie and get some dry fire because wherever you live might be cold, okay? Or maybe I'm wearing a button-up because I'm going to church or wearing a button-up because I'm wearing, you know, I'm going to a wedding. That might determine how you carry and what you carry, right? So if I'm wearing anything with a jacket or a hoodie, I personally like to carry four o'clock. Why? Because it's four o'clock is a lot more comfortable for me and it doesn't print back there. And plus, I don't like appendix because appendix is not comfortable. And plus, I print a lot back here. Plus, I'm sitting in a vehicle and I just don't want to be uncomfortable. And I wear fitted clothing, if I, in case I forgot to mention that. So think about the garments and how you got to defeat them. Dry for that a little bit, but then also think about positions. Appendix or four o'clock. If I was wearing a t-shirt, I switch constantly because it just depends on what I wear. But if I can get away with the four o'clock, I'll definitely go with the four o'clock because again, appendix is just not comfortable. Now let's talk about the car. If you're in a car all the time, then you need to, there's some considerations there. Okay, so if I'm in a car for hours, do I even really need to carry on my body or maybe I should just be a little more comfortable, take that gun and holster out and set it down somewhere in the vehicle, right? If I'm just going somewhere and it's a quicker kind of thing where I don't need to take that gun out, how do I wear that gun? How do I wear my seat belt over the gun? For example, some people will tell you that you should put the seat belt or the lap belt portion of the seat belt over the holster, over your garments, and then do it that way. Some people will tell you you should wear the seat belt behind your holster, behind your gun, in between your belly and the gun. I would tell you not to do it that way because we've tested this way several times and we always get caught up on the seat belt if we have to exit the vehicle very quickly because now the seat belt is become, has become attached, tethered to us. So over the, over the holster is just fine, but again, it's a lap belt. Your seat belt shouldn't be creeping up on your holster if you are actually wearing it like a lap belt. So therefore your holster shouldn't get covered and you shouldn't have to go in between your holster and your body. 
All right, just make sure that that seat belt or the lap belt portion of that seat belt is nice and low. Again, things to think about. What about your garment? Do you tuck your garment into your gun or into your pants when you're driving or do you leave it over and then have to defeat that if you ever had to you know, fight from your vehicle? Little things like that to consider. I won't tell you what's right or wrong except for that lap belt portion. It needs to go over everything else you guys need to play with, okay? We already talked about appendix versus four o'clock. I'll tell you, appendix is just not my favorite. It's uncomfortable for several reasons. Four o'clock is more ideal, but yes, it's a little bit slower, but you know what? I'm not trying to get a one and a half second build draw on a guy. I'm not trying to get a sub second draw on a guy. I'm just trying to get off the X, get to my gun and get good shots on target while I'm moving to cover. I think I can manage that and maybe give up half a second or even a full second to get to that gun. But who knows, situation dictates. But you guys need to play around with appendix and four o'clock and just kind of see what works for you. Because again, I use both because of the different garments that I wear, because of the different places that I go, right? Now, if I wear four o'clock or if I wear a hoodie, and uh, or something like a jacket, that 43X goes away and I go to a bigger gun like a 19 or something like that, okay? All right, so like I said earlier, I carry two pistols just about everywhere I go. That means I carry one on my body and one on my bag. But let's start with the one on my body. So on my person, I carry this 43X appendix. Now I can carry this 43X at the four o'clock and that's why I have this holster. The 43X itself is actually very stock. Uh, I already talked about this, about why I carry stock guns for my EDC, uh, but it's a very stock gun and it's a 10 plus one. There's, I don't even have like a 15 round magazine in here. It's a 10 plus one. Plus I carry an extra magazine of 10 rounds. So that gives me a capability of 21 rounds total. Now with these 21 rounds, what I'm capable of is delivering a quick and violent fight to somebody, but I don't have very long, I don't have very much ammo. If this fight is something more complex, meaning that I have to run to cover, now I'm exchanging fire with this guy, I may put that 43X away and go right to my bag because I'm gonna grab that big gun and I'm gonna fight with that. I have a red dot, I have a light, I have more ammo, a lot more ammo in fact. So that is where I'm gonna go if the fight gets complex. But if it's a simple reaction kind of thing where I'm drawing, shooting, neutralizing as I'm getting off the X, my 43X and my 20 rounds gives me the utmost confidence to do that. All right, so what you see in front of you is a Vertex bag. This is their transit bag. In fact, this is like one of their very first ones. That's how old this thing is. But this is my EDC bag. I've had this for probably five years now. But uh, rather than showing it here, let's go to the range and I'll show you what's in it there. Let's just start with the front portion because I have three different portions on this Vertex transit bag. The very top is all my medical stuff. If I just need medical, it's all right here. I got two tourniquets, two cat tourniquets, of, of course. But I also, have, I also have my trauma pack here. So within here, I have hemostatic gauze, a bunch of other stuff that I need to treat a gunshot wound um, or any kind of impalement, really. And that's all I keep in this front pocket because I don't want people to see what else I have in this bag if I'm just treating somebody with medical aid. I'm not trying to give away the goods here. So for me, again, I like to carry two tourniquets because you know you just never know what kind of mess you may get into. Now, the main pocket is my utility pocket. In this pocket, again, because I, I take this bag everywhere, so I have gym stuff, AirPods, little external charger, my Defender uh, Ultra from Surefire. I love this thing, by the way. It goes with me everywhere, even on the plane. Yes, you can get away with it on the plane. TSA can't do anything about it. Now, in my, in my very back pocket, again, designated for something completely different. I have basically my work pouch, right? So, 19X with the E-Flex, Surefire light for light in case of low light, obviously. Two extra magazines. So between three magazines, I have probably a good 60 to 70 rounds. I have my nighttime recognition signal, meaning that if I need to communicate with the cops, I break this and say, hey, I'm the guy with the green chem light, right? And also the bag and I give them a description. Daylight or daytime recognition, here it is. Hey, I'm the guy with the American flag on my bag. 
that's me, don't shoot me. Why are these important? Because you may be the good guy on the scene and you may have to coordinate with law enforcement or authorities in some manner. So again, give them something is better than nothing. Daytime for a flag, nighttime with the chem light and everything else is, uh, is obviously for work. So these three pockets for these three bags, obviously very designated, very specific, except for that middle bag, which is just my utility. Um, but this is it. This is my bag from Vertex. Again, it goes where, with me everywhere. This is, I think like this is the Transit 1.0. It's an older one. The 2.0s are a little, little prettier. But again, I take this with me everywhere. And then 43X with an extra magazine on my body. All right, guys, so in conclusion, it doesn't really matter what you carry or what your philosophy is on how to carry. What really matters at the end of the day is how you train with what you carry, right? What I mean by that is we can train in several ways, a little bit of dry fire in the morning before we step out the door, or just some scheduled dry fire throughout the week, five, 10 minutes, you know, and that'll take you a long way. It'll keep you refreshed so you're not, you know, weirded out by having to draw your gun for the first time. Also get to the range. There's nothing like live fire to kind of confirm all the dry fire that you guys have been doing, the check on learning, making sure that yes, everything else is great, but now I'm getting my hits as well as I'm moving or standing static. So train, train, train is the key word. And as you guys train and as you guys kind of live your lives, you'll understand and evolve your EDC. You know, whether you're a single person or with a family or whatever, it's always gonna be changing. So don't just fall in love with your EDC, constantly think of ways to evolve your EDC. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us. Obviously, we want you guys to follow the channel. We want you to be a part of our family here at Tuava Training Group. Turn on the notifications so you know when we post, but also like the video because when you like it, it tells YouTube, hey, this is a good video. Let's push it out to more people. Algorithms, we know how that works. If you have something to say, if you have feedback, a comment or whatever to on this video, put them down in the comment section. We would love to hear from you on this video. What did you think? What did you think about my EDC, my 43X, my bag? What do you guys carry? What is your philosophy on appendix versus four o'clock? What do you think about in the car, lap belts, in between the gun, over the gun, who knows? We would love to hear all that here in the comment section. You should also share this video. Sharing it to other people, sharing it with your friends, it'll drive us, drive them, well, we're already here, it'll drive them to the YouTube page, and it'll just help us grow our community, motivate us to get more videos like this out to you guys. And lastly, please don't forget to go on to 2 Alpha Training Group, sign up for the newsletter, check out the latest apparel. If you like this Kandahar wine mixer shirt, pick it up. I love this color actually. But we are putting out apparel once or twice a month, and you guys should definitely check it out because it's, it's cool. I'm just saying, I like cool shirts. So I made some cool shirts for you guys. All right, that is it from us at 2 Alpha Training Group. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers.